Now we spent a lot of time on electrophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, we're going to spend comparatively less time on nucleophilic aromatic substitution, NAS for short. Uh, now in this case we're going to be replacing a halogen rather than a hydrogen, and so that's our leaving group, and we're going to be replacing it with a nucleophile instead of an electrophile. And since we're reacting benzene with a nucleophile, keep in mind that means benzene is the electrophile in this reaction. Uh, so just remember that. Uh, and again, benzene's not very reactive either way, so if you're going to react it with a nucleophile, you better make it a strong nucleophile. And here, the amide ion is exceptionally strong. So great nucleophile, the example I'm using here, but you'll see uh, amide ions, hydroxide ions, alkoxide ions, uh, like methoxide or something, uh, are by far the most common. So sometimes you'll see it done with just plain old ammonia, but it's not my favorite, but it does work. So it turns out there's two mechanisms and not just one. And uh, the first one here we call addition elimination. And the reason we call it addition elimination is because there's two steps involved. And the first one's addition and the second one's elimination. Uh, we'll find out the second me mechanism is the exact opposite sequence of steps here. But uh, addition elimination. And so the uh, first step is going to be nucleophilic addition. And so our nucleophile is going to come attack. And it's going to attack where we have a leaving group, so wherever your halogen is. Uh, and it turns out wherever your halogen is, it would be very helpful if you had some electron withdrawing groups in the ortho and para positions, as many as possible. The more you have, the faster this goes. Uh, we'll see they'll have a stabilizing effect on the intermediate. Uh, but if we do so, we're going to get this lovely anionic intermediate here. And because it's anionic, that's why electron withdrawing groups are going to stabilize it. Uh, and it turns out we wanted those with wrong to be ortho and para because those are the carbons that are going to share the negative charge. Now, we've got this one right here, and we've got two more to draw. I'm going to draw them later. So we'll come back to that. But I just want to show that this really is just simply two steps, addition and then elimination. So elimination is where we're going to form a pi bond and kick off the leaving group. So, and that gets us to our final product here off to the side. Now, I do still want to draw those other resonance structures in, and it turns out I'm still going to be being lazy because I'm actually not even showing two of the other resonance structures. Um, but in this case, we could, let's do this in blue, we could move that lone pair down here and move that pi electrons out to there, and that would leave us with... this resonance structure. And we could do this one more time. So we could move the lone pair into this bond and push the pi electrons out here, get one more resonance structure here. So I said I was cheating here. It turns out with these NO2 groups, it turns out if we actually drew those out, we'd actually do resonance out here with the oxygens too, it turns out, both in that structure as well as in this structure. So technically I drew three of the resonance structures. There's really five. I'm kind of cheating, sorry. Um, but I am going to cheat. Uh, this is the gist. But I really wanted to focus on just the two steps of the mechanism because it really is just two steps. Getting hosed up and drawing all those resonance structures, kind of sometimes uh, students see the trees instead of the forest. Uh, so hopefully that's the idea, but we also got to look at the converse mechanism here, elimination addition. So the second mechanism here, again called elimination addition, or sometimes people call it the benzyne mechanism for the intermediate that kind of looks like benzyne. It looks like we get a triple bond in the middle of the benzene ring, which is really strange. Uh, it doesn't appear to be the most stable thing in the world. Uh, but in this case, the first step, you actually have the amide ion, in this case, acting as a base instead of a nucleophile. And we'll find out with our intermediate being benzene instead of an anion, um, without being an anion, then electron withdrawing groups don't stabilize in the same way. And so it turns out that this usually is the favored mechanism if we don't have the electron withdrawing groups uh, on our benzene ring in those ortho and para positions. So first thing we're going to do is deprotonate a hydrogen next to where the leaving group is. And we'll do something to akin to looking like E2 elimination here and form a triple bond in our benzene ring. And this should look really strange. So that does look like a, a triple bond there. Uh, I don't know if this is a bent bond or what the deal is, but these are sp hybridized carbons uh, in this structure, which means their bond angle should be 180, but they're not. So there's quite a bit of angle strain going on here regardless. Uh, but this is probably a pretty high energy intermediate. Uh, we also formed a molecule of ammonia here. Uh, at the same time. So, and in this case, the next step now, that's the elimination, is going to be the addition. And so we're going to have another equivalent of NH2, and I'll just draw another one out here. 
we're going to have it now do nucleophilic attack. And now, technically, it could attack this carbon or this carbon. And that's kind of one of the big evidences for the fact that this reaction actually happens is that we actually can have substitution taking place at two different locations. So let me just show you the products here real quick. So if the NH2 attacks right where the chlorine used to be, we get this product. But if it attacks this carbon on the right side of the alkyne, oh, products are aromatic, then the NH2 can add here. And you get both products. That's kind of the, one of the biggest supporting evidences that we get this funky intermediate here, is that you do get both of these products. We don't have to worry about this with the additional elimination mechanism. You only ever substitute right where the leaving group was. But here, you've got two locations where you could potentially substitute. Uh, and so in this case, again, we've done the elimination. Now let's do the addition. So, And I'm just going to show it on one side rather than the other, but we'll do the addition. Cool, and from here we just simply need to come and protonate. And we'll protonate from that molecule ammonia we just formed a second ago. We'll come and take a hydrogen, a little proton transfer. Cool, and that gets us to this product. So had we wanted the other product, then we should have attacked on, again, this side instead. I'm only going to show the one mechanism, though. Uh, but those are your two products, and again, the fact that they both form is the big supporting evidence for this benzene mechanism.